They have a seat right there. There you go. Camilla, how are you? Fine. Good. My name is Don Ruck. I've been asked to be your attorney for tomorrow's court hearing. Mm -hmm. And I want to take uh, a few minutes to get to know you a little bit better, but more importantly, to get a sense of what we need to do to accomplish what I anticipate is um, your desire to go home. Yes. Okay. Um, and I've done a little bit of the background investigation into what happened. I've also spoken to your mother. And the challenge that we're going to have, to be quite frank with you, is that typically um, during these court hearings, our task is to convince the judge that it's safe for you to go home. Okay. But it seems to me, in your case, and this is what I want to talk to you about, is that we not only have to convince the judge, we have to convince your mother. Mm -hmm. uh, and I know that there's I've... some tension and some conflict there. Um, so what I want to do is try and get some uh, information from you on how we can best uh, convince not only the judge but also your mother that uh, you no longer belong in this place. Um, I've been, the last time I was in court was, uh, I guess, of last year when I was acting bad and I ran away from placement. Uh, I got out the court system, well before that, I ran away from the children's campus, and I got tired of it. I didn't want to be there no more. So I ran away February 7th of last year. I turned myself in a month later. They sent me to the Alpha House, and I was going to Provisions, our alternative school. So they let me out of the Alpha House May 7th, so I went home. Um, my last court date was February 22nd, and I had my baby February 4th of this year. I didn't go because they said I just had a baby and it wouldn't be okay. I've been doing good after that. I've been going to school and stuff, and then I felt like, well, this is too much for me, so I just dropped out of school so I get my GED. Well, we called around, and some places they said you had to only be 18. And it was one uh, at Block in East Chicago. It was 17, so, but it was too late. The classes was ending. It wouldn't make no sense for me to start going. So I was doing fine and OK. Um, before that, when they left, I tried to stick my baby daddy in the house so he could take a shower. We got called, and I dealt with it. She said, I cannot be in the house when they're gone. So okay, let me stop you there and let me ask you a couple of questions. One of the, or a couple of things really, that the court is going to look to in deciding whether you stay here or whether you go home mm -hmm. um, is, you know, whether there have been instances in the past where you've been in trouble, where you've gotten maybe off easy, and whether you've learned your lesson. So one of the things that particularly concerns me is that not too long ago, you had um, a very similar charge. You were charged with running away, right? Yeah, but this time it was a misunderstanding. Okay, well, let me ask my question then, okay. and that's how do we explain when the judge asks Kimyata, not too long ago you were in here for the same charge, mm -hmm. and I assume at that time that you told the court and told the judge that this wouldn't happen again. Mm -hmm. um, now we're here again, yes. and the judge is going to say, Kimyata, what's different this time? So h help me present that side of the story? Well, I would tell him that it was a misunderstanding because at this time, I don't stay with my mom. I stay with my godmom. And the reason why my mom made it as a runaway because I didn't call nobody. I didn't call my godmom. I didn't call my baby daddy's family. None of us called nobody. And we're teenagers. We having fun and stuff. That's the only thing. She made it a runaway incident report because she thought I had my baby with me and I ran away, and I did not run away this time. I've been doing so good. I was supposed to get a job before this even happened. When school started, I was supposed to start my GED. So I made a lot of process, and my mom promised me $300, and that's how I got arrested, because she set me up. Okay, let me, let me back up here, because I'm having a little bit trouble just kind of following. I know you want to tell me anything and everything that's going on, you know, with your mother, but let's try and focus on a couple of things. Again, um, one of the particular concerns the court's going to have is, is Kimyata going to come back uh, for future court proceedings in this case? No, because this is a misunderstanding. Yep. I'm not 
a bad child anymore. Okay, so it's very easy for, and we see it all the time, kids come forth, they come to court and say, I'm a good kid, this kind of stuff uh, it will never happen again, and lo and behold, okay, it does. So mm -hmm. I, what I like to do, and what I want to do tomorrow, is to not just say, yes, we are, um, I'm a good kid, this is not going to happen mm -hmm. again, but here's evidence of things I've got going on in my life yes. that demonstrate that I'm a better person and I'm above and beyond you know, what happened and this won't happen again. So let me be very specific in a couple of questions. Tell me about where you are uh, with school and with your education. Well, uh, when school starts, I will be getting my GED. Well, tell me how far you've completed. These are things uh, the judge I, is probably going to ask. So. I didn't start yet because if I would have started a long time ago, it would have been too late. What grade have you completed? Tenth. Okay. And when did you last attend school? I guess when my daughter was a month or two months old. Okay, when was that? I gotta say April. Okay, when was your daughter born? February 4th. Of 2008? Mm -hmm. All right. So your daughter was a couple months old. You tried to stay in school right after yeah. she was born. Things didn't work out. No. Okay, so you dropped out of school so you could care for your daughter. Yeah, All and right. get my GED. Okay. Um, your plan at this point then is, once your life is stabilized, to begin the GED course. And you said that your mom indicated she was going to help you financially to get your GED? Yes. Okay. Start daycare. I was going to set up an appointment uh, for a program where it could pay for her daycare again. So it's, it comes with a lot of stuff like you either have to work or be in school. So first I'm going to do my, I'm going to do my GED. I have to get enrolled in GED first and then set up an appointment for my daughter so she can, so the state can pay for her day, daycare. Okay. Okay. All right. Apart then from, what do you spend most of your time doing right now? Is it, for the, is it most At of your home, time? Okay. I don't go out. The only time I go out is spend time with my cousin or my baby daddy. My mom, she used to get mad and say, you sitting, I'm tired of looking at you and you sitting in the house, don't go nowhere. I don't go anywhere. Well, let me ask you this question. One of the concerns that I have or the challenges that we're going to have is it seems to me that there's some issues with your mom giving you instructions of things to do or things not to do mm -hmm. and you not following them. And one of the things that came up was the issue with uh, your boyfriend. Mm -hmm. And the way I understand it is your mom said he is not to be in the house. Yes. And what happened? I tried to sneak him in. Why? So he could take a shower because right. we was out that night. So now put yourself in the position of a judge looking at this. You're certainly an intelligent woman. Mm -hmm. um, your mom tells you don't bring this guy in the house for whatever reason, and you go ahead and do it. How do you explain or how do we explain why that was okay? Well, I really can't explain it. It's like I want to help him out because he stays in Griffith. So he we out in Hammond and he ain't taking a shower. I already washed up or whatever. I want to help him out too, even if I was gonna get in trouble with my mom. So I took that risk into helping him and not listening to my mom. So I got in trouble. What's him. the um, what's the reason why you and your mom have such a bad relationship? Well, it all started when I was fourteen, so this is nothing new. We're just now like now we're a little bit closer. Before we used to fist fight, argue, just everything. I used to run away all the time because of that, the things she used to do. So now it's much, much, much better than it was two years ago. And you're here being detained and this is better? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. Things can get better though. Yeah. How's her relationship with your daughter? It's good. It's great. No problems at all. Do they see each other? Does she help you care? Yeah, like we communicate through the baby and we communicate without the baby too. Like I talk to her about stuff, like girl stuff, personal stuff, and we listen to each other. Sometimes we have our days and sometimes I can be B word or she can be the B word, but at the end of the day, I still love my mom and still do what she say, but I could be rebellious at some times. Okay, I mean, I think a lot of those things you tell me are good things that we can, we can point to. I'm not sure though we've got what we need to get to convince, you know, your mother to get up there on the stand. All she wants me to do is 
get my education. That's her mainly thing, and me following the rules. That's no problem. I slip up, teenagers slip up, you know, but that's her mainly thing is for me and to get my education. So she'll be asking the judge to get that court order for me to get my GED, so that's no surprise. Other than that, she just want me to follow the rules and get my education. Those are two main things. One of the things I'd like to be able to explain to the court is what goals you have for yourself. Tell me about what you see yourself doing in a couple of years. Um, after I get through my GED, I want to be a massage therapist. Um, I like cosmetology. That's another one of the things. And or a singer. But I know that the ones that really can get me started and give me a house or something like that is the cosmetology or the massage therapist. But I would do the massage therapy first. All right. All right. During the prior time when you left, um, did you leave or did your mom kick you out of the house? The first time she kicked me out and then the second time I had a choice. And when they said it was a runaway, I was confused like, wait a minute. When I had the choice to leave the second time, I packed my things up. My mom, my stepdad, and my sister drove me to my godmother's house with all my belongings, all my baby stuff, all my stuff, so I can live with her. So that's why I was hurt and confused because why would she make this as a runaway and I'm not a runaway? I had a choice to leave or stay. Okay. Is there anything else you think that we should point out to the court that you think would help influence the judge's decision on what to do? That I have made a lot of progress and this was a misunderstanding and I wasn't communicating with my family. Well, let me ask you a question then. How long had it, had it been, the time that you were arrested, that you had talked to your mother prior to then? Uh, on the phone. She wouldn't listen. She did not want to listen. I tried to... Well, no, answer my question though. How long had it been prior to the time that you were arrested that you had talked to your mom? I'd probably say three days, no, three or two days. And where did you tell her you were? I called her on Friday and I told her I was with my cousin because that's where I was with, with my cousin in Hammond. I told her I'm okay, the baby's saved. I bought diapers and diaper wipes for her, so she's okay. I just needed some time to myself because being a teen mother, that's, that's hard. And I just dealt with the best way I could, just to get away from everybody, just to vent, so I won't do anything stupid. Okay, I mean, a lot of what I think I'm hearing and things that we can talk about tomorrow are that you've really tried to focus and center your life around having a better life for your daughter. Yes. Um, you know, and I think one of the things that we can point out is, is that all of the decisions that you've made as of late have been uh, an attempt to try and better yourself, mm -hmm. even if it meant you know, disrupting the relationship that you have with your mother mm -hmm. to um, try and give your daughter a better life. Yes. Um, and we'll see, like I say, how receptive that um, the court is. Have you been before Judge Bonaventura before? The female judge? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. One time. All right. Well, then you know from past experiences that it's... Um, um, you know, she's certainly a judge who is um, fair with people, but at the same time, you know, the people who've been through the system before, mm -hmm. like you have, um, it's a much more difficult task to convince the judge yeah. that um, what you're saying this time, that now it's for real. Yes. Um, and the only thing I would, I would ask when we go to court, obviously conduct yourself just as we're talking now, be yeah. very confident, but also, um, you know, there's going to be some difficult questions that I think I'm going to try and ask you, but if I don't, the court probably will. Mm -hmm. as to why you're back here again. Why are we here again? Um, and I think if you can really talk about the focus and the love you have for your daughter, at the same time tonight when you're thinking about court tomorrow, what I want you to do is think about the relationship you have with your daughter and what it would um, mean to you as a mother to have your daughter someday leave and not know where she is. And I think if you can try and, you know, 
focus on that and think about that. Um, you know, my hope is you know, that a lot of the love that you have for your mother will come through and that that will resonate with your mother tomorrow. Because mm -hmm. frankly, my, my big concern is convincing your mother that, yes. that um, it's time for you to go home. Do you have any questions? No, I don't. I'll see you tomorrow. Okay. Okay.